Chapter 14, The Mall. Remember Steel City Sports, um, the company that Lizzie works for, all, and also the sponsor for the PAL team, is at the mall. By the time I got inside the mall, there was only one thing on my mind, call home. But I didn't have any money. So when no one was looking, I ran to the wishing well and began to scoop up all the change out and put it in my hat. It didn't make me feel good to be stealing other kids' wishes. But then I thought there must be some nice kid out there who, if he knew, would make, me a, would make a wish that I was home with my mom and wouldn't mind if I used his wish money in the payphone to make it come true. After I cleaned out the well, I went to the grocery store and handed the cashier my hat full of change. Could I please have quarters for this? I asked. Sure, she shrugged and began to count it out. It was mostly pennies, so it took forever. Once I got the quarters, I ran to the payphone and shoved them all in the slot and dialed the number. As soon as Mom answered, I blurted out, Mom, I have to tell you my secret. Joey, Joey, what's wrong? I haven't been taking my medicine. I thought I was normal, but I'm not. And now I'm like my old self, and I'm in trouble with Dad. And I'm really scared. Slow down, she said. Take a deep breath, and let's take this one step at a time. I thought you were pitching tonight. I was, but then I lost it. And I told her as fast as I could about what happened, and the whole time I was looking left and right, expecting Dad to explode into the store and grab me. Joey, now listen to me. I'll have to borrow a car and come and get you. It's going to take some time, so you have to wait for me. Where are you? The North Side Mall, where Steel City Sports is. Well, you wait out front for me. I'll be there as fast as I can, license or not. But you know how long the drive is, so it's going to be a while, okay? Okay, I said. And when I hung up, I ran outside to the front entrance, and I hid in one of those fancy hedges that spell out welcome in cursive. I was all squatted down inside the letter O like a soldier in a foxhole. I peeked out at every car and person. I was so afraid to see Dad. I was hoping to see Mom. A long time passed, and I saw her. A car drove by, parked under a light, and when the door opened, I saw a woman with red hair. Then I jumped out of my hole, and I started running across the parking lot. It's me! It's me! I yelled and waved my arms over my head. But as soon as I got close enough, my heart stopped. It wasn't Mom. It was Lizzie, and there I was running toward her with no place to hide. Joey, what are you doing here? Your father's looking for you everywhere. My mom's coming to get me, I said, hopping from one foot to the next. You won't tell dad, will you? Not right away, she said, although he might be on his way here to see me. So hurry into the store. You can hide from him in my office while we figure out what to do. She held both my hands tightly, like they were reins on a wild horse, and we started to run. Did we win? No. After you went AWOL, they put Virgilio in, and he couldn't hold the lead. Well, then I didn't lose, because when I left, we were ahead. Well, technically, Joey, you took the loss. The bases were full when you left and you were responsible for those runners. Oh, I thought Dad would still have a perfect record for his tattoo. Well, right now, I'm feeling like tattooing J-E-R-K right across his forehead. I smiled because I was a good speller. What happened to you on the mound? She asked as we entered the mall and slowed down. I flipped, I said. Dad flushed all my medicine down the toilet, and I became my old self, and I just went around the bend. Oh, I'll say, she said, agreeing. Your dad's the same way. Right now, he's gone off the deep end himself. He's got his ups and downs, and I'm sure when he wakes up tomorrow, he's going to hate himself for this. But I'm not going to make any excuses for him. He can tell you himself how he feels. Right now, what can I do to help you? Well, I already called my mom. She's on her way from Lancaster. Lisey looked at her watch. I figured that's about three hours, she said. Why don't you hang out in my office? I have a TV in there and you can watch it and tell me what kind of car your mom has and I'll watch for her. 
Please don't tell my dad where I am, I said. I won't unless I have to, she said and held me with her arms around my back. With, must be her arms. Yep, her arms around my back. We don't want him calling the police, Joey. But no matter, I'll see to it that he doesn't come here before your mom arrives. I know how to handle your father. She made a fist and nicked herself across the jaw. We got to fight fire with fire, she said. I went into the office and for the next three hours I changed the channel about once a second. I wanted to watch everything and I couldn't get myself to watch any one thing. So I just spun through the channel so fast that I nearly watched them all at once. And that seemed to keep me in one spot. Finally, Lizzie came in. Joey, your mom's out back. Come on. I stood up and we ran in the direction Lizzie pointed. A door was open and I ran out onto a loading dock. Mom was standing in front of the car and I just ran off the end of the, end of the dock and right into her arms and I knocked her back against the fender. Easy, partner. She said as I slid down the front of her dress like a cartoon character who had run into a wall. You better get going, Lizzie said. I'm keeping Carter at bay, but you know how unpredictable he can be. Once you guys have gone, I'll call and tell him what's happened. Thanks, Mom said. I turned and waved to Lizzie, then hopped up and jumped into the passenger seat. Mom got in and we took off across the parking lot. There's a patch for you in my purse, she said. It won't kick in for a few days, but the sooner we get you started, the better. I reached in and found it. I ripped open the package and slapped it on the back of my arm. She reached over and rubbed the side of my face, and it was the best thing I ever felt. Who was that woman? Mom asked. Dad's girlfriend, I said. She must be a saint, Mom said. She is. I said, and I was smiling because she was a saint for me, too. This visit with your dad has been a fiasco, Mom said, shaking her head. It's not your fault, I said. I wanted to see him, and you didn't. And I didn't let you see him. Ooh, and if I didn't let you see him, I thought you'd always blame me for keeping you away. Now you know on your own, she said. I wanted Dad to work out, I said quietly. I wanted our whole family to be together. No, well, he blew it again, she said. Looks like it's just you and me. Lizzie said he's going to hate himself in the morning, I said. I could see in her face that she was going to say something mean. Then she paused, and she just looked tired. Yeah, she said. That's one of his biggest problems. He always hates himself in the morning. He needs meds, I said. Well, he's been self-medicated forever, she replied. I think he needs help. Well, he doesn't believe in help. He needs me, I said. He sure does. But he's still too messed up to even know it. And when she said that, tears started running out of her eyes, and her driving got all curvy. I knew it was my turn to cheer her up. One thing about Dad, I said, is that he is a better driver than you are. She started to laugh. There's a Kleenex in the glove box, Mom said as we headed toward the highway. I pressed the button, and the little door dropped open and hit me on the D. Oh, my goodness, I shouted. Pablo is with Grandma back at Dad's house. Oh, my goodness. Sugar, Mom hissed and hit the brakes. Sugar, sugar, sugar. I knew this was too easy. We slowed down until we could turn around. Okay, we'll go back and get him. We have to. He's the rest of our family, I said. Then he better start acting like he wants to stick with us. That darn dog is destined to be forgotten. Next time, get a bigger dog. This one's like out of sight, out of mind, if you know what I mean. I did, but I wasn't getting another dog. That would be like me saying to you, next time pick a different kid. Well, we couldn't have that, she said, and pulled over to the side, or her side. Nope. Sorry, and pulled me over to her side. Nope, I like the one I've got right now. I was the right kid, and she held me to her side until we pulled up to Dad's. Oh, his car's here, Mom whispered. He's probably waiting for us. But look, I said, pointing. Pablo's tied to a leash out front. I hopped out of the car, 
I ran to Pablo, who started yapping like I had come to strangle him instead of save him. My hands were shaking so hard I couldn't get the clip undone on the leash, and he kept prancing from side to side, and all I could think about was how I should put a patch on him. I looked up for a moment, saw Grandma pull the curtain to one side to glance out the window. Then she disappeared, and I heard her unsnapping the locks on the door and figured Dad would be on me in a second. I pushed Pablo over to his side, pinned him down, got the snap open, grabbed him, ran to Mom's car, and as we tore down the road, I glanced into the side mirror, and there was only a tiny image of Grandma standing there on the sidewalk. She was waving, and at first I thought she was telling me to come back. Then I realized she was waving goodbye. I leaned out the window and yelled, So long! I'm going to miss you! I felt sorry for her because she was stuck there with him, and he just wasn't nice. He wasn't like me, only bigger, like Mom said. He wasn't like me at all. After a minute, I looked over at Mom and said, Do you think he'll ever really turn himself around? Mom's driving got all curvy again, and she pulled the car over on the side of the road. Time for a family hug, she said. She put her arms around me and Pablo. She never could do two things at once, which was good, because when it came to hugging, I wanted her all to myself. That's the end of Joy Pixel Loses Control. Um, there are two more books. The next one's called What Would Joey Do? And the fourth one's called I Am Not Joey Pixel. I'm not going to read those aloud, but the first two are really two of my favorites. I'd love it if you kept reading the book and you'll find out just how Dad has, has really improved. So check it out. Enjoy the book. See you next time.